visualize quantum mechanics. Hello world, it's Siraj, and data visualization is one of the most exciting parts of data science. It's the art of turning raw numerical data into a visual representation that actually lets people understand its significance. We're going to visualize a medium blog post text dataset using the Plotly Python library, and in the process, learn about the three fundamental types of data visualizations, relationships, comparisons, and compositions. We're already at the point where the amount of data in the world is too much for humans to analyze without proper tools. We need algorithms to help us make these huge data sets consumable and presentable. Data visualization allows us to instantly scan through massive amounts of data and derive patterns from it. These patterns let us derive insights and then we can make decisions based on those insights. Data visualization involves math, science, psychology, and design. Hans Rosling, a data visualization expert, once said that most of us need to listen to the music to understand how beautiful it is. But often, that's how we present statistics. We just show the notes, we don't play the music. Data literacy means understanding those notes. It's knowing the difference between concepts like means and medians and all sorts of things like that and when to use one over the other. But visual literacy is the music itself. Data leads to insight which can form a narrative and narratives are what help make a data story. Visual literacy asks questions like, is this chart memorable? Is it beautiful? Is the meaning clear? Will it make me more attractive? Yes. It's important to understand how charts can help us, specifically what charts say, what charts mean, and what charts do. These are three distinct categories. All charts say things their creators intend, and many say things that were not intended. A well-designed chart lets us interrogate a dataset very closely. This can be thought of as what a chart says explicitly, and we optimize for this by choosing the charting method that maximizes the ability to display and query data. Precision, accuracy, and recall are all qualities that are aligned with this approach. But charts also make implicit statements Statements. As communication mediums, charts are subject to rhetorical devices and stylistic form over content. For example, orienting a bar chart downward and shifting its color can dramatically reinforce the subject and theme of a chart. And this implicit channel of data visualization can be even more powerful than the explicit channel. There's also what charts mean to consider. There's an intentional meaning, but there's also a historical, cultural, and contextual meaning. We've got to take this into account as we visualize data. We need to have a clear idea of the audiences for our charts and the context around the data in order to communicate a cohesive story. But the most important thing about a chart is not its aesthetics or even the technology used to create it, it's the impact. Impact is what a chart does. A well-designed chart is one that's optimized for impact. It allows us to make very important decisions with absolute clarity. Before computers, data was found in books and manuscripts. In order to make charts from it, statisticians had to use tools like rulers, dividers, and protractors. Nowadays, we have data visualization tools that are orders of magnitude, more powerful and easy to use. So let's look at three of the most popular tools, starting with the Jupyter Notebook. This interface has fields for code input, markdown input, and has the ability to run code to deliver visual readable images based on whichever visualization technique is chosen. Google's online Colab environment and Kaggle's kernel environment both mirror this functionality. They're both backwards compatible with existing Jupyter Notebooks, which allows us to use Python without having to configure our installation environments locally. It all happens in the cloud, including dependency installs. My dependency of choice for visualization is Plotly. Plotly is 
is an open source library built on Plotly.js, which in turn is built on the popular JavaScript visualization library D3.js. We can use a wrapper on Plotly called Cufflinks designed to work directly with Pandas data frames. So our stack will look like Cufflinks on top, then Plotly, Plotly.js, then D3. And what that means is that we get the efficiency of coding in Python with the world-class interactive graphics powers of D3. This lets us create charts in a single line with interactive elements for investigating data, many options to explore, and easy customization for a final presentation. What more could a data scientist ask for? Will you get out of here? If you don't want to code, however, there's also Tableau. This is a drag and drop tool that's especially effective for delivering interactive data visualizations for the results derived from big data operations, deep learning algorithms, and multiple types of AI-driven apps. It can be integrated with AWS, MySQL, Hadoop. It's a very versatile tool for creating detailed graphs, and it's used widely in the industry today. There are a variety of products available Available, including a public version that's free to use. Another underutilized tool is Google Charts. It's free and offers a massive variety of visualization types that we could spend hours browsing through, from simple pie charts all the way up to multi-dimensional interactive matrices. There are also many adjustment options, which makes me happier than Pharrell. Since it renders the results in HTML5 and SVG, it's compatible in any browser. And because it combines data from multiple Google services like Google Maps, it allows us to produce interactive charts that use real-time data and can be controlled using an interactive dashboard. So that was just three examples, but there are a lot of very powerful data visualization tools out there. And when we're using any one of those tools, it can be tempting to use the many different options available in any of them to make our visualization as mesmerizing as possible. But this isn't the best idea. For example, let's say we're a Mexican wine company, Ole. We have a wine called La Chupacabra. We want to compare the average price of our wine with the rest of the world. If we create a bar chart of a wine price data set, we can add all sorts of features to our bar chart. Rotated text, border lines, grids, titles, rainbow colors. But when you look at the bar chart, pay attention to where your eyes land. What attracts your attention first here? Notice how there are so many things screaming for your attention. It's hard to know where to focus. Now, let's remove the colors. Better, right? But notice those grid lines are still distracting, so let's remove them too. Now, it's much more clear, but this rotated text is probably making you turn your head to read this, so let's just rotate the bars and turn this into a horizontal bar chart. Now we can immediately tell which country has the highest wine price. And since we're comparing our wine to the rest, let's very selectively use color here. We have to tailor our graph to what we were really trying to convey. But now we finally made a chart that immediately makes our point to a first time viewer. As you can see, visualizing data is both an art and a science. So let's cover the three basic types of visualizations we can convey a relationship, a comparison, and a composition. A relationship shows the connection or correlation between two or more variables through the data presented, like the market cap of a stock over time versus the overall market trend. If we have two variables we're comparing, we can use a scatter plot. A lot of real world data has a time element. So if we plot out the evolution of these variables over time, this scatter plot can let us see how these variables have changed. Notice how in one line, we got a nicely formatted time series X axis, added a secondary Y axis because our variables have different ranges and added in the titles of the data set as metadata. If we have three variables, we can set the size of the plotted points to change in proportion to the 
magnitude of a third metric. This bubble chart lets us visualize the relationship between more variables easily. Oh, and don't forget about correlation heat maps. This can show the relationship between many variables all in one chart. The second type of visualization is a comparison. This sets one set of variables apart from another and displays how those two variables interact, like the number of buyers of five competing shower heads in one month. There are many different types of charts we could use here. The wine dataset chart we used beforehand was one example of a bar chart. We can categorize the type of chart we use by whether or not we are including time as an element, then further subdividing by variables, categories, and periods of time. Line charts are a really easy way to compare many categories of variables that change over time together all at once and with proper color code. Coding. They tell a story with little effort. And the third type of relationship is a composition. This collects different types of data that make up a whole and displays them together, like the different search terms visitors used to land on our site or how many of them came from links. The canonical example here is the pie chart, showing the total data set as the sum of its parts via some feature that we select. But if we want to demonstrate time as an element in our data set, we can use a stacked chart, like a stacked area chart or a stacked column chart. Again, it shows how pieces of data all come together to make a whole. Now, I do want to mention that there is actually a fourth type of visualization, and that's a distribution. It lays out a collection of data to show how it correlates and helps us understand if there's any interaction between the variables, like the number of bugs reported during each month of the latest iOS developer preview over 9,000. But we learned about distributions last week, so I won't go too much into it this week. When we make these plots in a notebook, notice a small link on the lower right-hand side of the graph that says export to Plotly. If we click that link, it'll take us to Chart Studio, an online offering that lets us touch up our plots for a final presentation with features like annotations and color options. Then we can even publish our figure online so anyone can find it with a link. Plotly itself is a graphics company. Its library is free to use, and we can make unlimited charts in offline mode and 25 charts in online mode. Overall, there are three data visualization terms to remember from this video. A relationship shows a connection or correlation between two or more variables in a data set. A comparison sets one set of variables apart from another and displays how those variables interact. And a composition collects different types of data that make up a whole and displays them together. What data set do you want to visualize next? Let me know in the comment section and please subscribe for more programming videos. For now, I've got a scatter, so thanks for watching.